Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, DwyerSportsBetting.com. Look us up on Roku or in the sports section, Dwyer Boxing and Sports News. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Let's talk about a fascinating fight <clears throat> that's being discussed for 168 pounds involving two unbeaten fighters. Andre Ward, a champion at 168, former Olympic gold medalist, and Edwin Rodriguez, who just destroyed Dennis Grachev in one round. Now, before I go further, as many of you know, <clears throat> along with some other fine attorneys, Jethro Eisenstein, Josh Dubin, I've been part of Andre Ward's legal team. So it would not be fair to either Andre Ward or to Edwin Rodriguez for me, a very biased commentator, to predict a winner in this fight. So I'm not going to predict a winner in this video because of my affiliation with Andre Ward. Instead, what I'm going to do is to just talk about some keys to the fight that you need to look at and you need to think about. Okay? First, let's talk about Andre Ward. Andre Ward fights out of an orthodox stance. At times, he has switched between righty and lefty. Years ago, before I ever met Andre, I speculated here online, and the videos are still up, about whether Andre Ward was a southpaw or was right-handed. I couldn't tell based on how he threw punches, right? It seemed to me that he was a southpaw operating out of a right-handed stance. I thought he was left-hand dominant. When you look at Andre Ward fights, in particular, when you look at the Carl Frotch fight, <clears throat> you're going to see that he's coming in with withering left hooks that are badly hurting Carl Frotch, right? And you're going to see that He's not really relying on his right hand for power shots. Another fight is Andre Ward against Chad Dawson. <clears throat> You'll notice Ward has a lot of power in his left hand. Well, now we found out the reason for that. Andre Ward in interviews has publicly stated that he's had problems with his right hand for quite some time. In fact, he actually is coming off of surgery for a tear in his right shoulder and Ward openly admits that this right hand had been bothering him for years for most of his career right and so the first question in this fight given that Andre Ward had to back out of a scheduled fight against Kelly Pavlik and has been out of the ring for some time the first question in this fight is how good is Andre Ward's right shoulder. How has Andre Ward recovered from surgery? By the way, the same question needs to be asked of Sergio Martinez, who himself is coming off of surgery. Whenever you hear that a fighter has had surgery, and whenever that surgery involves things like shoulder tears, or torn ligaments, or stretched ligaments, you do have to ask yourself how the surgically repaired part of the fighter's anatomy is going to deal with the stress of a prize fight. So the first question is, how is Andre Ward post-surgery? Understand in interviews, Andre Ward openly is saying that he now has power in his right hand that he didn't have before. That he was more hesitant in the past to throw that right hand since it was injured and then now he has something extra special for his opponents. Now that might be the case, but of course until the guys hop in the ring, the jury will still be out. So that's the first question, Andre Ward's health and inactivity, right? He hasn't been in the ring for quite some time. There is something called rust in boxing and here especially where a fighter has been in the hospital, 
you can't assume that that fighter's inactivity had him in the gym every day. I'm sure Andre Ward spent a portion of the last few months recovering from his injuries. So that's the first question. Now here, another question is Edwin Rodriguez. Right, understand three of his last five fights, three of them have gone the distance. Right, that Dennis Grochev fight was one fight. Edwin Rodriguez has had others in his career. Some of the guys who went the distance with him recently, notably Don George, has had a rocky go of it since fighting Edwin Rodriguez. Right, he had a draw, he's had two losses. <clears throat> so, of course, you know, there are questions about the level of opposition that Edwin Rodriguez has fought. You heard me earlier say in this video that Andre Ward fought Carl Froch. Understand Andre Ward has fought people like Arthur Abraham, people like Mikael Kessler, right? People like Chad Dawson. We know what Andre Ward can do against the very best, right? We don't know what Edwin Rodriguez can do against the very best. Let's recall too, Dennis Grochev wasn't unbeaten when he fought Edwin Rodriguez. Grochev had lost to Lucien Boutet, right? So, there are questions about the level of Edwin Rodriguez's opposition. <clears throat> there are also questions about the fact that some of that opposition, which might be elite, might not be elite, has gone the distance with Edwin Rodriguez. Okay, now, Let's also consider this, just the strengths of the fighters. Edwin Rodriguez is one of those rare boxers who can hide his upper body. By that I mean, you know, like with Sergio Martinez, another fighter with this gift. They can stand in front of you, but they have such great balance and the ability to bend their upper torso. They lean so much that it's hard for an opponent to think I want to hit this guy in the liver or I want to hit this guy in the stomach or solar plexus and then be able to actually do it because Rodriguez is at a lean it's hard to find him up top and if he's moving his upper body as much as he does when he's on his game it's very hard to also find his head understand Rodriguez is unbeaten for a reason right so he's very hard to find one question you need to ask yourself is can Andre Ward overcome that skill that Rodriguez has can Ward find him right and let me just say to do that would require an inside boxing game Right, an ability to cut off the angles, to pin the guy with the moving upper body. Right? Andre Ward is one of the premier inside fighters in the game of boxing. Right? Just take a look at some of the fights he's had. He's excellent inside. He can literally get inside a guy's power. Edison Miranda, for example, and he can smother that fighter. Take a look at the Alan Green fight, right? If you get close enough to a guy with a movable upper body, right? And if you can do so in a way where you're not getting hit, you can smother a guy with a movable upper body. I think it's an open question on what happens if Andre Ward is able to pin Edwin Rodriguez up on the ropes as he did Alan Green. Right? Boxing's all about angles. From the outside, a guy with a movable body that he can hide is hard to find. What happens when you pin him up on the ropes? That's a question you need to ask. Another question is the weight. Understand that Edwin Rodriguez fought his last fight at a catch weight of 171.5 pounds or something like that. 
Andre Ward is the champion at 168 pounds. Right, Ward forced light heavyweight champion Chad Dawson to come down to 168 to fight him. Right, Edwin Rodriguez, was there a reason why his last fight was at a catch weight? Or was that just happenstance? We simply don't know. Understand that Rodriguez, though, would have to come in weighing three and a half pounds less than he weighed in his last fight. Right? And so, the way I see this fight going is I see this fight being a tale of positioning. Right? Edwin Rodriguez is a looper. He throws punches at odd angles. Sometimes loopers are able to destabilize technicians. Take a look back in the 1970s at Ken Norton's success against Muhammad Ali. Right? Sometimes a technician will have his guard up to block a punch that comes at normal angles. And a looper will literally get around that and will be throwing punches that, I guess it's debatable, might be at the back of the head. Right? Or might come in at such angles that people are going to be unsuspecting of the loop. The problem with loopers, though, and this goes hand in hand with what I talked earlier about smothering, is that the shortest distance between two points is a straight line. A fighter with a straight punch, if he throws that punch at the same time and it's the same speed as a looper, is going to have his punch land first. The other problem with loopers is you can smother a looper, right? If you get inside their punches, right? If a guy's a mid to long range hooker, and if you're able to get inside their punches, a looper could well be left defenseless, right? And so, here, that leads to our conclusion. I'm not going to say who I think wins the fight. But the big questions are, health-wise, is Andre Ward still Andre Ward? That right tear in his shoulder, has it added or detracted from his game, the surgical repair of it? Right? First question. Next question is, Edwin Rodriguez looked great in his last fight, but is he ready for prime time? Wasn't Dennis Grachev a big underdog against Ishmael Shalak? Wasn't he a big underdog against Lucien Boutte? Right? Isn't Dennis Grachev the biggest name Edwin Rodriguez has fought today? Is Edwin Rodriguez ready for a fighter of the caliber of Andre Ward, who was in the Super 6 tournament and who has fought multiple past champions and including a current champion? Right? That's a big question. Keep in mind, too, Andre Ward has even fought Saki Obika, who has a share of the title today. Right? So, just food for thought. Another question is, if Edwin Rodriguez starts hiding his upper body and starts throwing heart punches with a loop, is Andre Ward able to figure out the angles? Because understand, they're going to come from unconventional places. Is Andre Ward going to be able to figure out the angles to block those loop punches from long distance? And is he going to be able to find Edwin Rodriguez's body? Also, is Ward going to be able to cut off the distance between him and Edwin Rodriguez, get inside of Edwin Rodriguez's loop punches, to start working Rodriguez over from the inside out. If he does that, what's Edwin Rodriguez's response going to be? I think style-wise, this is a great fight. I think it would be a treat for the boxing public, in part because both of these guys are unbeaten fighters. Let's hold our breath and see what happens next. Understand that, of course, both of these guys are very well represented by some of the biggest names in the sport of boxing. And right now, there's an intense negotiation taking place 
to try to figure out if they can resolve their differences to make this fight go forward in the ring. You need to keep an eye on it. Right now it's September 1st. If the fight comes off, it would come off later this year in November or December. Keep a lookout. Let me know what you think about the fight. Leave your comments for me here online. Visit us at DwyerSportsBetting.com and, of course, on Roku at Dwyer Boxing and Sports News. Thanks for stopping by.